and you can see that our app is now running on port 8080. If we head back to, I should have mentioned this, if we head into our package.json, you can see that there are some scripts already set up for us by the Vue CLI. Notably, we can serve the app, we can build it, and we can run our linter. And this just wraps Vue CLI service commands. And I'll be using yarn in this case to execute the various scripts and um, install the dependencies here, um, which will get managed in our package.json. So the app is running. So if we head back into our browser, and we go to localhost 8080, you can see our view app. Notice we have this nav bar that we saw earlier and clicking on about or home navigates us to either our home page, which contains the hello world component as a sub component and the about page, which just has that little tiny bit of markup to show that this is an about page. Now, one thing I'd recommend if you are um, going to spend a lot of time developing in Vue is to install the Vue DevTools plugin. And when you're running in development mode like this, it makes it really nice um, to be able to see the various components that are uh, composing your Vue application. So as I change, the, um, the dev tools here will um, show us what actually is getting rendered in the DOM at the component level. It also contains the ability to watch uh, the Vuex store, which again is beyond the scope of this particular series, um, any events that are occurring as well as um, the routes as they change. You also have the ability to run some performance testing and uh, change settings as you prefer. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a simple change and we'll demonstrate that we have um, hot reloading enabled. So I'm going to do this and this, and then I'm going to put this on the left side and this over here. And uh, for now, I'm going to close the dev tools, or you know what, maybe we'll keep them open. We'll just make them uh, far off to the right side here. And we know that our home component here contains this hello world component. And so let's go into hello world, and I'm going to close others. And let's remove everything except this h1 tag that contains this message. And you can see it's in this sort of double handlebars syntax. So this is saying that there's some variable somewhere called message that can be used within this context. And we'll look at how that's used in just a moment here. So I'm going to give us some more space here. So you can see that we're using this view property decorator. Um, this syntax may look a bit different if you're using um, non-class syntax view or if you're choosing not to use view property decorator, but I like the syntax here. And so you can see that what's happening is we're exporting some class, hello world, which extends view. It has this decorator component on it. And we have a decorator prop here, which is saying that we have some message value, um, which is a string. And um, we should also note that in your script tag, we need to explicitly say that we're using TypeScript here using this a uh, lang directive like this. All right, so what is a prop and where is this message coming from? So much like other front end frameworks, um, a prop is something that gets passed from some higher level to some lower level. So in this case, some uh, parent component to this hello world as a child component. So if we head into views in our home component, we have this hello world element here, which has a directive message on it, which is just assigned to this string. So what's happening here is hello world um, via the syntax here is saying there must be a prop that I'm expecting called message. I know it's a string and I have access to it here because it was passed to me as a prop. Generally, I like putting the decorators um, above the variable here. And you can see here that we're rendering message out to uh, this particular location within the child component. So if I come over here and, I, and instead I say, welcome to good books, we can see that that gets updated here on our screen. So to make a quick logo, I'm gonna come over here to this Shopify thing called Hatchful. 
I'm not associated with this, um, but it's a nice tool for doing some super quick prototyping. So let's just choose art and photos here. Maybe give some, or yeah, art and photos. Next, we'll make it calm, reliable and classic. And the name will be good books. And sure, we'll just say online store website. This is going to generate some really basic logos for us that we can use uh, really just for, as I mentioned, prototyping purposes. And I'm not sure if um, any of these look better than any others, but it's kind of neat that we can get some sort of prototyping out, kind of like the Pelican here. And so now all I'm going to do is just select a logo. Let's select um, this one. Looks kind of fun. All right. I'm not sure that it has really much to do with books, <laughs> but it will serve our purpose. Um, and in fact, I'm going to basically just take a screenshot here without getting too technical. And I'm going to save that to my desktop. And then I'm actually going to drag that directly into my assets directory here. All right, then I'm going to rename this to GB logo. Let's delete the initial logo here and let's bring in assets GB logo. So we're going to go back. We don't really need to save anything, but I thought I would mention this as kind of a useful tool. So what if we want to change this up a bit? Um, first of all, let's just make a simple change to the navigation here where instead of hello and about, we have like, um, or home and about, we have home and my books. Okay, so now it says my books. If we click my books, it says this is an about page. So how are we going to fix that? Well, first of all, let's change the route to books. I'm going to change the name of the about page to books.view and we'll come into books.view and so right now this is just um, some very basic markup. Let's head into our router which we've probably broken now and rather than slash about here we're going to map it to slash books, name it books, and then I'm going to use the basic component syntax here to bring in books. And so we're going to, from books.view, import books. And so now our about page doesn't route to anything, so let's just go home here and then go to my books. And so my book says this is an about page. So let's go ahead and fix that up. So we'll head into books.view and as a head uh, h1 tag here, we'll say my books. Now we have an API. That API has some data for the books that we have in it. And so now we need a way to actually wire it up so that our view app displays information from that API. And what I'd like to do is to separate the concern of querying that API out to um, a sort of service layer, if you will. Um, we'll make a directory called service here and make a directory called services, which I should name services. And then in here, what I'm going to do is create a new TypeScript file. And we're going to call this book service. OK. Now, to make queries, um, it's simple enough to use the built-in um, fetch API. Another way that we might do this is to use a library called Axios, which is fairly common. Axios is uh, maybe a little bit overkill for a simple app like this, but it is um, just all the same, super easy to use and something that I'm familiar with, so that's what we're going to use here. So let's export a class called book service and we can export that as the default and let's make a method here an async method called get all books again remember that our API for the time being is 
going to be returning all of the data in our database, which does not scale. So I just want to remind you of that and keep, keep that in mind as we move forward here. So we have a promise, and right now it's returning in any type. So what I want to do is create a specific type for um, a book. So what we'll do is create a new directory here. I'm going to call this types. And then within types, what I'm going to do is create a type called iBook or book anyway. So let's create a TypeScript file. And we'll call this um, book.d.ts. And here we're going to export a default interface iBook. I prefer to use the i syntax in both uh, TypeScript and uh, .NET. I know it may be more conventional for people who have just mostly worked in TypeScript or JavaScript to um, name their interfaces just what they are. And I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. As long as you're clear that it's an interface that you're using here, I'm going to stick with the i prefix because I prefer it. But this should map directly to uh, the view model that our API would send back. Now, if you recall, again, for simplicity's sake of getting the API wired up, we're passing back a model, which is effectively the data model. Our data model is going to map one-to-one -one with our view model if we were to create it. Um, so in either case, our interface here would look identical. But we're going to say created on date, updated on date, title, string and author string. Okay, so there's a book. If we head back to our book service, now let's return an iBook array instead to be more explicit about the type that we expect back. So how are we going to get this? Well, we need to install Axios so that we can use Axios to make a get request. Axios is just a, um, a library that we can use to interact over HTTP with any API that we, we like. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to stop the server. I'm going to say yarn add Axios.